And we are set to begin. Okay, excellent. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. This is really exciting to see such a great turnout. My name is Jennifer Haberman Bolin, and I am Trekka's career and college specialist. And I am I'm part of the counseling school counseling team. And we also have Miss Amanda Varney joining us, and she is um, one of the school counselors here. So we're excited to see you. Um, we're just going to um, hop right in. Um, tonight, we are doing the annual information session for public schools. Um, the Ohio Department of Education came up with this information session. We are to use it during the 22-23 school year in preparation for those students that want to participate in College Credit Plus during next school year, which is the 2023-2024 school year. Okay, so what is um, College Credit Plus? So College Credit Plus is Ohio's dual credit program. It is where students can earn high school and college credit at the same time. Uh, students enroll in college courses and adhere to the policies and requirements of the college. So in a nutshell, that is um, the definition of College Credit Plus. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so in order to participate in College Credit Plus, otherwise known as CCP, students must be in grades 7 through 12 during the 2023-2024 school year. Students must be Ohio residents and attend an Ohio secondary school, an Ohio high school, either public or private, or receive homeschooling instruction. I do like to uh, mention here TRECA students that are in grades seven through 12, they are eligible um, to apply to participate in CCP because TRECA, we are a public high school. So that's really important to remember when you, if you decide you want to participate and we start filling out applications. Next slide, please. Excellent. So students in grades 7 through 12 can apply to any Ohio public college or participating Ohio private college. There are some approved out-of-state colleges. However, those are very few um, and very rare and very specific um, to the course that they offer that Ohio will accept and pay for. Students can apply to multiple Ohio colleges for CCP, and they can attend multiple colleges for CCP. Next slide, please. Okay, so students in grades 7 through 12 can choose from a variety of college-level courses um, throughout CCP as determined by placement testing and course eligibility rules, which we will go over a little bit further um, in the presentation. Um, students can earn credit to satisfy both high school and college requirements, um, and we'll go into that in depth as well. And it's important to know that three or more credit hour college courses converts to one high school unit. So a three credit hour college course will give you one high school credit toward graduation. Next slide, please. Okay, so student, CCP students must successfully complete the courses in order to earn the credit. So even if a student fails or withdraws from the course, the college transcript and the high school transcript are both going to reflect that final grade. So the high school transcript um, will match the college transcript with the course grade. So if you take a CCP um, course through a college and you get a B in that course, that B is gonna be on your college transcript as well as your high school transcript. So students can take CCP classes during the summer, fall, and spring semesters. So when we talk about a CCP year, the year starts in the summer and it runs through the fall and the spring. And then the next CCP year starts the following summer. Students um, can take courses at the high school, college campus, or online. I do wanna note that the high school option 
um, is only available if the high school has partnered with a college or university to offer courses. TRECA students, um, the, the options that are available to you are to either take your CCP course through the college in person on the campus or online through the college. We do not offer courses at our high school. Next slide. Excellent. Okay, so eligibility. So this is a big one. And this, this um, slide can seem very overwhelming, but I'll break it down for you. A student is eligible for the CCP program if they meet any of the following criteria, okay? The first one is to obtain a remediation free score on one of the standard assessment exams, um, such as ACT, SAT. Um, colleges oftentimes will give students maybe an Accuplacer or the Alex. Um, we'll go over those a little bit further as well. Um, if the student has a cumulative unweighted high school grade point average of at least a 3.0. So if you are a junior, we're going to be looking at your GPA um, from freshman, sophomore, and junior year to see if it is at least a 3.0. Um, or if you have a cumulative unweighted high school grade point average of at least a 2.75, but less than a 3.0, and you received an A or B grade in a relative um, or a relevant high school course. So let's say um, your overall GPA is a 2.75 and you want to take a CCP English course and you received an A in you know, your English course at TRECA, then you might be eligible to participate in CCP and take um, college English courses. Um, if a student is seeking to participate under um, you know, this section of the revised code and your cumulative unweighted high school grade point average is not available to determine the eligibility, then the student um, could be eligible if they've received an A or B in a relative or relevant high school course. Um, if a student's grade point average is calculated beyond the hundredths decimal point, so let's say it's a, you know, a, a 2.893, the grade point is rounded to the hundredths decimal point for the purpose of determining the student's eligibility to participate in the CCP um, course. Next slide, please. Excellent. Okay, so talking about those um, assessment exams, so they can include the ACT, the SAT, the Accuplacer, the Alex, the PlaceU, or the MapleSoft. So after you apply to the college that you want to participate um, in CCP through, the college will notify you about their exam requirements. Each college has their own requirements for students who want to participate in CCP. They will also let you know which assessment they provide and um, also let you know how you can sign up to take that assessment if necessary. Uh, the college will then review your scores using statewide standards um, to make sure that you fall within um, the appropriate score to participate. Excellent. So college admission. So how do you get into this, the college's CCP program? The first step is you must apply for admission. Um, the, every college on their website, they have a College Credit Plus application that students fill out. It's different than um, the regular admissions um, application. So when you go to fill it out, you definitely wanna make sure that you're filling out the one for College Credit Plus. After you apply, you have to meet the admission requirements of that college. Um, students also must complete a permission slip that will be provided to um, the student with the college's application. So most um, CCP applications, there is a online version um, that you can fill out. And so then there would be an online permission slip that you would also fill out to be attached to that application. Uh, once you uh, complete the application, you're gonna contact the college to learn more about their requirements, processes, paperwork, and deadline. Every college has different deadlines for when courses need to be registered, 
um, when, you know, supplemental paperwork needs to be received, um, you know, in their own processes of how to get there. Colleges have the final decision on student admission. Um, if, the high, if the student is admitted to the college, the college will then send a questionnaire to the student that must be completed in order to be enrolled. All right, so if, you, if the student is considered eligible and has been admitted into the college, then the college will discuss course options with the student based on the assessment scores, prerequisites, and other requirements. So depending on um, the placement testing and the scores, the college um, advisor will let you know, you know, based on your scores, you would be eligible to take these courses or based on the high school courses that you've already taken, you have the foundational skills that then it opens up, you know, another block of courses that you might be able to take through the college. As we said before, CCP courses can satisfy high school graduation requirements. So your school counselor and myself, we can definitely help you understand graduation requirements and how CCP courses can substitute in for those. Um, some high schools have more requirements for graduation than the state minimum. So that's why it's very important for you to reach out to your high school school counselor and myself so you can make sure that you're on track to get all of the credits that you need for graduation. Okay, so students that are eligible and ready to enroll in CCP must complete their first 15 credits in level one courses. Those level one courses include transferable courses, courses in information technology, computer science, anatomy and physiology, and a foreign language, courses that are part of a technical certificate, courses that are part of a 15 or 30 credit hour pathway, and courses in study skills, academic, or career success. Those are all considered level one courses. Colleges must post their level one courses. So um, when you're on that college's website, a lot of times you can search level one courses, or if you are under their CCP tab, a lot of them have the list of the courses um, that are considered level one. Once a student completes the first 15 credit hours in level one, they can then enroll in level two courses and level two courses are pretty much any other college course that is allowed under the CCP program. And remember 15 credit hours, how we said before, a typical college course is worth three credit hours. There are some that are worth a little bit more or a little bit less, but the typical course is worth 15 credit hours. So it's approximately or three credit hours. So it's approximately five college level one courses that you would need to begin with. Now there are some courses that the college offers to their traditional college students that are not um, CCP eligible. So the non-allowable courses include private applied courses with one-on-one -on -one instruction, such as performing art lessons, or if you wanted to take maybe guitar lessons or voice lessons or something like that, that is not allowed under CCP. Courses with very high fees, um, study abroad courses. So unfortunately, CCP will not pay for you to go study in France. Um, physical education courses, any course that is graded pass fail is not allowed. So CCP courses must be on the letter grading scale, A, B, C, D, F. And then remedial courses or religious courses. Um, so those are not allowed. So grades, so college credit plus grades earned in the college course is the same grade that will be on the high school transcript. Um, and those CCP course grades will be factored into both your high school GPA, your high school grade point average, 
and your college GPA. So CCP students, because you are taking college courses, you'll be starting your college grade point average, which then follows you, you know, after high school, college to college, wherever you might go. <clears throat> okay, if a high school uses a weighted grading scale in a subject area, then CCP courses in that subject area will be weighted using the same scale in order to calculate the student's grade point average and class rank. At TRECA, we use an unweighted grading scale. We do not weight classes, um, but it is important to know this. So if you know, you're know you not with TRECA next year, but you are participating in CCP and you're at a school that does weight, um, weight their grades, then this would definitely apply. Okay, so a lot of times we get asked, what courses should I take? It is recommended that students should consider courses in a career pathway that interests them. So if you are a student that you are very interested in maybe computer science or information technology, when you talk to your college CCP advisor about what courses uh, might be good ones for you to take, you can look at those degree pathways and see what courses are within those pathways. Um, and once again, students should ask about pathways that identify courses leading to a major or degree requirement. If you're unsure about what pathway you would want to take after graduation, that's okay. Um, students can take CCP courses in subject areas that will satisfy graduation requirements. So if you're not sure what you would want to go to college for after graduation, but you know that English is a really strong suit for you, you might want to take or look into taking a CCP college or a CCP English course um, because that could count as one of your high school required English courses. And almost all college majors require some sort of English course. So it, it, it might satisfy a requirement for a graduation pathway that you don't even know that you're interested in yet. Um, CCP students must work with their school counselor to ensure that they're meeting any mandatory testing or other high school graduation requirements. So, um, you know, because you're taking a CCP course in lieu of um, maybe a TRECA high school course, you still might need to take, you know, the, the mandatory end of course testing. So it's very important to keep the communication open between you and your school counselor at TRECA. Okay, so how many classes can students take? There's a formula that we use. Students may be enrolled in up to 30 credits per year which includes high school courses, okay? So, um, you know, the 30, and then we take how many credits that you are earning through TRECA courses, and we, you know, do the, do the math to figure out the maximum CCP credits you take. So a way to kind of remember this, it's like a teeter-totter. So the more high school courses you take, the less CCP courses you'll be eligible for because you'll be earning a lot of those 30 credits through high school credits. Um, the maximum number of credits allowed for a student while participating in the program total is, that should say 120, not 12, <laughs> is 120. So a CCP student throughout the, their lifetime participating in CCP can earn a maximum of 120 credits and no more. Okay, so what happens if a student enrolls in more than those 30 credits for the year? That's then when um, we at the high school will discuss with the student whether or not to drop the course. Let's say um, they just signed up for a course and it's gonna put them over that 30 credits. That student will either need to drop the course prior to the no fault withdrawal date, which we'll talk about, or the student and family can opt to pay for that entire course, including tuition fees and books at the college's standard rate, which is considered option A, which we'll talk about in just a moment. 
Okay, so the differences between high school and college. Okay, so let's talk about tests. In high school, tests in high school classes are sometimes given weekly or at the end of each chapter. In college, tests are generally fewer in number, covers more material, and is worth a lot more points. So that's something to really keep in mind that, you know, in high school, if you don't do so well on one test, you usually have numerous tests where you can work to bring that grade up. And in college, there's a lot less tests in the course. Study time. In high school, required homework ranges usually between one to three hours per day. And for college, the standard rule of two to three hours of homework for every hour spent in class. So usually three to five hours per day of homework is going to be um, expected. In high school, information is mostly provided um, in class. Um, out of class research is minimal. In college, the coursework will generally require more independent thinking, longer writing assignments, and a lot more out of class research. Um, as we kind of talked about before, in high school, there's numerous quizzes, tests, homework assignments, you know, extra credit, things that you can do that all um, factor into your grade in your high school course. In college, there's fewer tests and fewer, if any, homework assignments that will be used to determine final grades. Many college courses, um, the professor will give homework, but that homework's not graded and doesn't go into the final grade, but you're still expected to do it. Okay, another big difference is the role of parents. So for all of you parents and learning partners out there, um, you know, in high school, parents are strong advocates who work really closely with teachers and counselors, and you can really advocate for your student and be very, very involved. In college, the parent or learning partner serves as a mentor and support for the student, but the college views the student as the independent decision maker. So if you wanna know how, um, you know, your student is doing and maybe their CCP psychology course and you reach out to the professor, the professor likely is not going to talk to you because they want everything to come from the student because the student is the independent decision maker. Um, in college, there's also the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, which um, protects the student education records. Accommodations. In high school, parents and students work with high school staff to determine what assistance or accommodations can be made for students that maybe, um, you know, are on an IEP or could use a 504 plan or, you know, maybe need some additional help in some area. In college, students must work directly with college staff to determine if accommodations are needed. IE, IEPs and 504 plans may or may not be included in the discussions. So it's very important to know that if a student has an IEP or a 504 in high school, it does not automatically translate to college. Um, that student needs to reach out to the college um, and talk to them to see if they would be eligible for any additional accommodations. So that's a big difference. Okay, so benefits of participating in CCP. We've talked um, about a lot of these already, but it's a great way for students to earn high school and college credits at the same time. Um, it's a great way for students to get a head start on career planning and degree or certificate completion. You can knock out some of those college courses while you're in high school, so you'll be further ahead in your degree when you start college. You can experience college early to understand the expectations of college life. Um, we have some students that maybe take one CCP course a semester and, you know, just so they can kind of experience the differences of college courses from high school courses. And we have others that take more than one. It's really all dependent on, on you um, 
And then also the biggie, you can save tuition and textbook costs as um, TRECA will pay for the CCP course and the required textbooks as long as the student receives a passing grade. Which draws us into there are some consequences and risks to participating in CCP. If a student does not earn a passing grade or if they withdraw too late from college courses, TRECA may require students and families to reimburse the tuition that the district has paid. So it is important to note that if a student um, is, is part of an economically disadvantaged family, the school may not seek reimbursement. Um, but another big um, risk is that the grade that student earns will be on the college transcript, which does follow the student, you know, from college to college, wherever they may end up. Okay, so if a student fails the course or withdraws often, future financial aid may also be impacted negatively. So if you want more information, definitely contact the college's financial aid office if you, if you find yourself either getting into this situation or in this situation. Um, but this is financial aid after you graduate from high school, um, you know, different grants, loans, um, scholarships to help you pay for college after high school could be impacted. If students perform poorly, they may also be placed on CCP probation, CCP dismissal, or on academic probation or dismissal by the college. So what is CCP probation? A student will be placed on CCP probation if they earn less than a cumulative 2.0 GPA in their CCP course or courses, or if they withdraw from two or more courses in one academic term. While on probation, the student may only enroll in one CCP course for one college term, semester or quarter, and then may not enroll in a college course in the same subject in which they previously earned a D, an F, NC grade, which is no credit grade, you know, or, or the equivalent grade of their college. Um, so that is uh, very important to know. So if you do not receive um, a passing grade in say a CCP English course, you cannot take it again the following semester. If students on CCP probation do not increase their CCP GPA to a 2.0 or above during the probation period, then we go to what's called CCP dismissal. While on CCP dismissal, students may not enroll in any College Credit Plus courses. Um, a student can request an appeal to be reinstated in the program. Um, there will be, you know, meetings if, if a student is placed on CCP probation and or placed on CCP dismissal, we will meet and we'll go over all of the options in the appeal process. So CCP probation student may appeal to take a course in the same subject in which he or she previously earned a DF or received no credit. Now that being said, the college also has their own requirements. So let's say you took anatomy and physiology one and you got a D in it, the college might say you need a C or above to take that second course. Um, and then CCP dismissal, within five days of being dismissed, the student may submit an appeal to the secondary school, TRECA, to appeal CCP dismissal or the student can appeal at the end of that semester. Okay, so expenses at public colleges or universities, there will be no cost to the students and families for tuition, required fees, and books. Some optional expenses are the responsibility of the family student, for example, parking and transportation. If you are taking a course on the college campus and you drive there and you need a parking pass, 
that would be the student family responsibility. But if you're taking an English course and you need an English book for that course, TRECA will pay for that. At private colleges or universities, there will be no cost to students and families for, once again, tuition, required fees, and the required books, and students may be charged a small cost per credit hour. So if you're thinking you want to join the CCP program for a private Ohio college, you definitely need to check with that private college to see if they charge the fee, as that would be um, your responsibility. Okay, so this is very, very important. Students must complete the intent to participate form and provide it to um, myself or your school counselor by April 1st. Every student in order to participate in, in CCP next school year, we have to have this form by April 1st. Students must confirm with the college and the secondary school if the student will take advantage of College Credit Plus using state funds, which is option B, or if the student will self-pay for the college courses, which is considered option A. So option A, you can choose option A, and that is where the family student will self-pay for college courses at the standard rate of tuition fees and textbooks. So TRECA does not pay for CCP under option A. Also under option A, students can choose to earn college credit and high school credit or only college credit. So if you take a CCP course under option A and you and your family are paying for it, you need to let us know if we are to include that course on your high school transcript or if you only want it on your college transcript. <clears throat> so option B, and this is typically what CCP students choose. Under option B, all college course tuition fees and textbooks will be paid by the state of Ohio, supported by the school's foundation funds and the college funds. So that is the one that says truck is gonna pay for tuition fees and textbooks. Under option B, students will earn college credit and high school credit. So, you know, your, your college course is gonna show up on your high school transcript and your college transcript. Option B is the default or the standard option for College Credit Plus. Um, when you do meet with um, your, your college CCP advisor, you may be asked to confirm with them the election of Option B during the advising process as well, so they know who to bill. Students must inform the college and the secondary school, TRECA, of the option choice. The final date to change the election of A or B is on or before the college's no fault withdrawal date. And that no fault withdrawal date is typically 14 days after the start of the semester. So it's very important when you're in CCP to make note of all the deadlines because that no fault withdrawal date is a key one. Okay, so support services for CCP students. High school counselors, um, we will definitely continue to provide assistance to all CCP students. Um, you also will be assigned a college advisor who is there to help provide course selection assistance. They're there to help you figure out which courses you're eligible for, and that would be um, good ones for you to take. And then colleges must also provide the same academic supports to CCP students, such as tutoring, library access, advising, counseling. Any supports that they offer their traditional college students are also available to the CCP students. All right, athletic abilities, student athletes, um, you need to learn the Ohio High School Athletic Association requirements know that summer term CCP courses cannot be used to bring you into compliance with the OHSAA requirements for athletic participation. Okay, so that's where you definitely, if, if you're participating on a sports team through, um, you know, maybe your, your district of residence, 
you want to reach out to coach, athletic director, you know, whoever there, just to make sure that what you're doing is, is falls within those requirements. Okay. Uh, will course credits transfer? Certain general education and technical courses will transfer, especially from one Ohio public college to another Ohio public college. So if you take an English course for English credit at, a, at a, one public college, that um, will transfer as an English credit to another public college. Um, you can also check with colleges to confirm transferability, especially if you're going, if you're taking CCP through maybe a community college and you plan on going to a private college, you're going to want to check with admissions to make sure that course will transfer. Um, if you plan on going to an out of state college, you will want to call that out of state college just to see how they handle Ohio's dual enrollment, enrollment credits. You can also visit um, transfercredit.ohio.gov, this website for transfer information, and you can input your course where you took it from and where you want to see if it'll transfer. Okay, so we talk a lot about being college ready, right? We've talked a lot about the academic uh, meaning of college ready with GPAs and um, the foundational skills in different courses. But being college ready is a lot more than just being academically ready. So you want to consider, um, you know, you or your students emotional and social transition and what their college expectations are. Definitely consider time management and organizational skills. Um, as we talked about before, CCP courses are very different from high school courses and even more different than TREKA courses where we're a work at your own pace. College courses are not that way. So you definitely want to look at your time management and organizational skills to see if you're at that point where you could um, manage. Grades earned in CCP courses for high school and college credits and will be calculated into the student's GPA at both places. I know that this is about the 10th time that I've said that, but it's very, very, very important that the grade you get in your college course is going to be reflected on not only your college transcript, but high school. Um, so that's something you really want to think about. Um, and then that college credit plus credits will also be utilized um, in the financial aid for after high school. Okay, so once again, deadlines. April 1st, um, students must complete and return the intent to participate form to um, either myself or your school counselor. Um, I will let you know where you can find that form um, at the end of the presentation. Um, if you know you want to participate in CCP, fill it out now, you know, get that done and over with. If you're unsure if you want to participate next school year, I highly recommend you still return that form because if you decide in the fall you don't want to, that's okay. But if you don't fill out the form and decide in the fall you want to, we've missed the deadline. You also want to check different testing dates. Um, if a college CCP program requires an ACT or SAT test, you definitely want to see when those dates are and get that test done. I will say a lot of colleges will also offer like the AccuPlacer and those different tests in lieu of ACT and SAT. And then just keep in mind semester deadlines, summer semester. Um, sometimes those classes start, you know, at the end of May. So the deadline to register for those courses, if you want to take a summer CCP course, you know, it could be the beginning of May. So you definitely want to keep track of the different semester deadlines. <clears throat> Okay, so once again, how do you get started? There's that intent to participate form again, guys. That's really, really important. So please complete the intent to participate form and it, provide it to either myself or your school counselor before that April 1st deadline. You're going to want to apply to admission at the Ohio College of your choice before that college's um, application deadline. 
And once again, when you apply, make sure you're filling out the CCP application and not the regular admission application. Uh, when the college, you know, emails you, you're going to want to contact them back and discuss assessment testing requirements. Do you need to take different placement tests? Um, how do you get that scheduled? Where do you go? Um, you'll want to get all of that information from the college. And then you'll definitely want to meet with um, your school counselor and myself to discuss scheduling graduation requirements. You can see what outstanding courses you have, and we can kind of help give guidance of, um, you know, what courses might be able to um, replace some of your required high school courses. Okay, so uh, the CCP website does have a lot of additional resources. This is the link to it. This PowerPoint and this pre this recording is going to be put on the Treka CCP website um, for you know an extra resource for you. Um, but definitely, if you've got additional questions, you can go to the um, Ohio Higher Ed uh, website. So once again, I just wanted to outline the next steps. You can go to treka.org forward slash CCP. And there you can complete the 2023-2024 letter of intent. Um, you'll schedule a meeting with me. My information is all over that part of the website. Um, you know, schedule a meeting with me. We'll bring your school counselor in. Um, we can help answer additional questions that you have, talk about grad requirements, all that good stuff. You're going to want to apply to the CCP program at the Ohio College of your choice. And once again, make sure you fill out the CCP application. And then once you apply, please, please, please let myself or your school counselor know where to send your transcript. Schools will not be able to um, process your application without your transcript. So, um, you know, once you apply, many times the application will then pop up and say, Please, email, please have your school counselor email your transcript to this email address. So jot that down, let us know, and we'll get that sent for you. Um, definitely, you'll want to then communicate with college about any extra testing or requirements that they have enrollment. And then once you schedule your courses and you have your schedule, you need to forward that to myself um, and your school counselor. Um, so that way we know what courses need to be on your high school schedule. Your school counselor is aware of, oh, they're taking a CCP English course. They don't need to be put in a TRECA English course for this year. And that is it. My goodness, you guys, I, you, you did such a good job listening to me talk for so long. Um, this is my information. Once again, it's um, Jennifer Haberman dash Bolin at TRECA.org. Um, you know, my phone number is there. Like I said, if you go to the resources, the treka.org forward slash CCP, all the information is in there. By the end of the week, this recording will hopefully also be in there. So if you're a student listening and maybe your parent or learning partner was not able to join, you guys can listen to this together. Or if you just kind of want a refresher, because I talk really fast and this was a lot of information, um, you can listen to it again. But definitely um, reach out with, with questions and we're here to help. And just remember that April 1st deadline for that letter of intent, which can be found at treka.org slash CCP. All right. That, that ends my, <laughs> what I have to say. Does anybody have any questions? And if not, if you're like me where you can't think of anything and then as soon as we hang up, you think of 16 things, feel free to shoot me an email um, and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, well, 
Doesn't sound like we have any questions. Oh, here's one. What is the difference between a credit and a credit hour? That's a great question, Haley. So in college, courses go by credit hours. So um, where I said generally courses are worth three credit hours, that translates to one high school credit. It's basically saying the same thing, just colleges say it one way and high school says it another. Oh, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us. We have another question. Do they need a foreign language to graduate? Ms. Varney, can I defer to you for that? Yeah. Are you referencing graduating high school or graduating college? Or, I mean, for most, um, for high school, we, PECA does not require a uh, foreign language to graduate. The benefit, uh, though, is, you know, some colleges might require foreign, foreign language. It's very um, rare these days. But if the school does require um, a foreign language, the college of your choice, it's sometimes beneficial to take it in high school for free. Um, you do your two years compared to having to do it in college where you have to pay for it. And um, it might be more hours that you're spending focusing on that, the content for foreign language. And then the question regarding how do you know your GPA in the Evolve portal, um, you have access to your GPA. If you're not sure how to access that in the Evolve portal, feel free to reach out to your school counselor and they can provide instructions on how to access that information. Great questions, guys. Thank you for asking them. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, everyone is free to go. Thank you for joining us. And definitely, if you plan on participating next year or are still considering it, definitely get in that letter of intent. They do have to have that before the deadline. And then you can always change your mind um, next year if you need to, if you decide not to participate. So um, that concludes our session. So everyone have a great evening. Excellent. Bye, guys.